Hi guys, my name's Amy. I'm a registered respiratory therapist, or you may also know us as respiratory care practitioners. I am actually here working in Las Vegas, Nevada during the COVID-19 outbreak. So as this has been occurring, um, I've been seeing a lot more about respiratory therapists on the news. And that is something completely foreign because although we are a very important part of the team, we often get overlooked in a lot of films, uh, TV shows, the media in general. So I wanted to give you guys a better idea of what we're doing on the front lines as respiratory therapists to help combat this virus. One of the things that I saw, which I thought was quite interesting, is there's been a concern that we will run out of mechanical ventilators during this pandemic if we do not do what's called flattening the curve. And even with flattening the curve, there is still a concern that we could run out of mechanical ventilators or life support machines. When someone's body is not strong enough to breathe on its own or there are issues with the lungs not functioning properly, there are critical cases where we will place them on life support or mechanical ventilators and the primary people that monitor and run these mechanical ventilators are respiratory therapists. Before we get into this I just want to let you know um, feel free of course to uh, share this video like subscribe follow me on Instagram for updates about what various respiratory care practitioners respiratory therapists are going through during this COVID-19 pandemic along with other healthcare professionals throughout the world. Um, I'm in a unique position where I have the ability to speak to a lot of these people on Instagram, so I am keeping people updated on what healthcare professionals are going through during this time and some of the issues they're having, such as shortages on personal protective equipment like masks. So please, if you're interested in those subjects, make sure to check it out and make sure to share it with people. As I was saying before, there are not a lot of respiratory therapists. We tend to have very heavy patient loads or um, whereas some professions such as nurses, they may have one nurse to four patients or one nurse to one patient. Even in the most critical of times, we will have a minimum of seven patients. So we are often running throughout the hospital, but we are the primary people who manage mechanical ventilation or life support. During this pandemic, we are some of the people that are on the front lines because not only do we manage mechanical ventilators and life support, but if there is any issue with your breathing at all, one of the first people you're going to see is a respiratory therapist. That is our bread and butter. We deal with the cardiopulmonary system, so if there's an issue with the lungs, we are there. If someone comes into the hospital and they're having trouble breathing, one of the first people they're going to see probably going to be a respiratory therapist, whether we are giving breathing treatments, using mechanical devices to help support someone breathe so that they don't have to go on life support, we're going to be one of the first people there. We are going to be all in people's faces, listening to their lungs, their heart, assessing them to see what we can do to help prevent that shortness of breath. And if you guys are familiar with the coronavirus at all, once symptoms start getting severe, what is the very first thing people complain of after a fever and a sore throat, shortness of breath. So there we are. So on top of the assessment of patients, there are various devices that we use whether someone is being affected by the coronavirus or not. But some of the most important things that we do put us at a direct risk for contracting the virus if we do not have proper personal protective equipment like masks, gowns, uh, face shields, goggles, anything that we need to use. So depending on the state that we are in, we will be the ones that will be intubating or assisting in intubating. What that means if you're not familiar with that information, there is a tube called an endotracheal tube that will often be placed through someone's mouth into their trachea coming very close to their lungs to help support someone when they are no longer able to breathe for themselves. So that process itself opens up anyone involved 
to a host of ways to become infected if you do not have proper personal protective equipment. We are then the ones that place you on the mechanical ventilator, or as some people might call it, life support. We're the ones that help choose those settings. We do regular assessments to make sure that that person is breathing properly with the machine. There's a lot of math and a lot of equations and assessments that go into that process. It's not as simple as just pushing a button or turning a knob, and you have to go through a lot of schooling to be comfortable with that and that is our primary focus is mechanical ventilation we are going to do everything within our power to stop that from happening but of course there are cases where the virus is very strong and we cannot prevent it we work alongside uh, doctors and nurses very closely we are the first people they call when someone is not breathing correctly you'll often hear in tv shows the one time i do hear as mentioned is when someone is starting to go downhill and they scream call respiratory you will hear that ringing throughout hospitals sometimes but we do always show up and we are there emergency situations are really where we come up most. If someone's heart or lungs stop working, we're going to be the ones that respond to those calls, managing the airway to make sure that the patient or the person experiencing these difficulties is getting proper oxygen. We will be at the head of the bed alongside the doctor 99% of the time if they are doing the intubation or the placement of that tube, if we are not the ones doing it ourselves in many states. So I just wanted to kind of bring this up a little bit because we are fighting this thing head on with everyone else. We work so closely with everyone, and more often than not, we do tend to get a little bit overlooked in the general public, but our doctors, our nurses, they, knew, they know who we are, and they call us anytime we're needed. So in this case, when we are very concerned about patients getting intubated or not having the resources to cover enough people that may need life support, we also need to worry about the fact of whether or not we have enough professionals that are proficient in these systems. We are very frequently exposed to this new virus and we have to make sure that we are being properly protected. All over the country I am hearing horrible stories from healthcare professionals that they do not have the protective equipment that they need to help people that are sick in the hospital. They're running out of masks, uh, gowns, gloves, uh, face shields, goggles. It's, it's really tragic and we do work so closely with all of these patients and it's just really a shame to see. That is, that's it. That's, that's what we're doing. We are fighting so hard for you guys and we are trying to do everything we can in our power to make sure that we overcome what is happening in this pandemic right along everyone else. And I'm, I'm sorry if it sounds like I'm laughing. It's just one of those moments where it's not funny, obviously. It's more of like a release of that feeling of anxiety because we go to work every day and we know that, that we're going to be on the front lines and we are going to be trying to battle this thing head on and we're doing it for you guys yeah so that's that's pretty much it i just want to thank you guys for listening hopefully some of you got some information out of this definitely feel free to comment message me if you have any questions and i will try to get back to you guys as soon as possible but as you guys know it's going to be a bit busy in healthcare for a while. Alright guys, I'll see you next time.